we've reached the finale of Alien Knockoff Month, and considering the movies I've done so far have had things like maggot rape, exploding avocados, and cyborg kitty cats, the movie I'm about to review is actually kind of normal by comparison. Creature, also known as Titan Find, is a 1985 sci-fi horror movie directed by William Malone, who also made Scared to Death, Fear.com, and the remake of House on Haunted Hill. Oh, and he played George Harrison in I Want to Hold Your Hand, so he's got that on his resume. Also, unlike the other movies I've done for Alien Month so far, this one's never gotten a widely available official release on DVD or Blu-ray. I mean, sure, you can find various bargain bin DVDs of it, but these are all just transfers of the VHS version, so it's available on DVD the same way something like Firebird 2015 AD is. Speaking of which, if you're old enough to remember going to the video store, chances are you saw this box cover staring at you from the horror movie section. I know I sure did, but I never actually got around to renting it. Well now I finally get to see it after all these years. Some people decide to go back to school and get an advanced degree when they get older. I see movies I never rented from the video store. So the premise of the movie is in the future, rival companies from the United States and Germany are in competition to find resources on other planets. You know, I gotta say, it's kinda sad to learn Germany breaks up again in the future. I really thought they could make that work. The movie also takes place in the far future year of... April 5th. Okay, that's further than next Sunday AD, I suppose. Anyway, an American geological team has been sent to explore Saturn's moon Titan. Oh, wow. Hey, I'll be the judge of that, okay? They're investigating some ancient alien ruins when they find some mysterious capsules. Well, can't see anything bad happening to these two. What do you think it is? I don't know. Looks like a face. Okay, gonna have to take your word for it. It's so dark I can't see shit. And here's a tip, if you look inside something and see this, DON'T OPEN IT! But I guess a photo's okay. Sweet Jesus, if that's how big cameras get in the future, I don't even want to know how big smartphones are. Oh. oh my god! Holy crap, something bad happened to him. And nice try, movie, but the VHS I saw as a kid said creature, so that's what I'm calling it. Hmm, the movie still doesn't say a year, but judging by that space station, I'm guessing it's 2001. Got to admit, though, that's actually a decent effect. Or at least it was. We're now introduced to our main characters who are going to investigate what happened on Titan. The crew is led by I Can't Believe It's Not Alan Thicke here, and it even includes Francine from American Dad. No, seriously, that's Wendy Shaw, and she really is the voice of Francine on American Dad. If we're on a research mission, why do we have to have a security officer? When you're married to a sexy man, there's always going to be some Bush League sniz trying to storm the castle. Hey, as long as Seth MacFarlane isn't the voice of the alien, I'm okay with that. There's also a security officer named Bryce, played by Diane Salinger, who looks like she's about to Sean Young the hell out of this movie. You can't take these. These are prescription drugs. You have got no right to take these. Uh, remember when we all thought doctors wouldn't just freely prescribe meds in the future? Also, I think I was wrong about this being the future. It's clearly still 1985. Well, they got a long journey to Titan. Might as well try and get to know each other better. I'm not coming back. I can feel it. Make love to me. I have no idea what brought this on, but... Okay. Say what you want about William Malone. The guy's smart enough to put a sex scene in the first 15 minutes. They better hurry, though. By the looks of it, they're about to crash into the sun. And turns out cameras aren't the only thing that gets bigger in the future. Apparently calculators are huge, too. Okay, time to land on Titan. And apparently they have to go through a Star Wars movie to get there? You know, to be honest, the effects aren't bad in this movie, although I don't think they built the Titan set strong enough since the ship ends up falling right through it. Okay, if it turned out they all died and the movie just cut to yet another group of characters, that'd actually be kind of funny. Just kidding, they're fine. The crew learns a rival German ship landed not far from them, and they decide to see if they can help them repair the ship. 
Jeez, looks like they forgot spring cleaning on Titan. Look at all those cobwebs. John, what did you say the temperature was here? On the surface, 288 degrees below zero. But down here, oh, it's a lot warmer. About 77 degrees below zero. Or as we call it in Saskatchewan, January. I'll give the Germans this. They know how to make one hell of a spaceship painting. Looks like they got there a little late, though. The Germans already hotboxed the ship. And what is with all the cobwebs? Is this place full of spiders? <laughs> Oh, never mind. It's just full of fake-out scares. Oh well, at least she ends up finding some real ones after that. We also get our first look at the movie's monster. Well, kind of, anyway. The creature's technically on screen quite a bit in this movie, but most of the time it's so darkly lit it's hard to make out what exactly it looks like. In fact, my title card artist for this episode had to guess how to draw most of it. I don't know, maybe they wanted to hide it because they didn't think it looked phallic enough? <laughs> Oh shit, you mean the monster got sex scene, lady? Great, now we can forget that rock set reunion from ever happening. They shouldn't be surprised something like this happened. I think this entire moon is haunted. No, really. It's a popular cliche to describe Alien as a haunted house movie in space, but I actually think that describes this movie a lot better. I mean, just look at it. The lightning, the cobwebs, the fog, the fact that it's so dark you can only see ten feet in front of you. It's like an old dark house movie in space. Hell, half the time I keep expecting him to find a jack-o'-lantern lying around. But I guess some more dead bodies will do instead. And quit looking in creepy places if you don't want to find stuff like that. They get back to the ship, but I think they're a little shaken up by what they've seen. I just can't believe that Susan's dead. I know. She was the only one that had nudity in her contract. And I appreciate the effort, Bryce, but don't feel like you need to pick up the slack. I see you like guns. Oh shit, it's something even creepier than the alien. That's German actor Klaus Kinski doing what he does best, which is looking like he's about to wear your skin as a dress even when he's playing a good guy. Honestly though, I'm glad he's here. Klaus Kinski's another one of those actors who manages to be weirdly entertaining no matter what he's in. Seriously, even the guy's resting bitch face has more personality than most actors. Oh, and don't mind the sexual assault. He greets everybody that way. Klaus plays the only survivor of the German expedition to Titan who tells them about the alien. Did the terror mistake of bringing aboard one of those broken canisters with a specimen in it? It was not asleep. It was alive. Uh, I think something has to be alive in order to be asleep. Otherwise it would just be dead. Then again, Klaus somehow manages to look both alive and dead at the same time, even when he's not playing a vampire. And speaking of being both alive and dead... Whoa, you mean Susan's alive? Oh boy, maybe this means I can get another sex scene before the movie's over. Uh, that was a joke, but again, okay. Before you do that, though, you might want to go inside first and- Oop, oh, too late. <laughs> I think this guy's the first person to ever die from just regular erotic asphyxiation. And it's a little late to bring toys into the mix, lady. Back on the ship, they realize their air supply is running low, so they decide to go over to the German ship and take some of theirs. But I think Klaus might have an ulterior motive for this trip. I want to go with Ms. Bryce. Okay, I don't know what a sex scene between these two would be like, but I do know it would be the scariest thing in this movie. And I don't think Klaus Kinski playing grab ass was even part of the script. I think he just started doing it and everyone on set was too afraid to stop him. Back on the ship, the crew gets a transmission from the guy who got some deep space deep throat earlier. And for somebody who was just exposed to a hostile alien environment, he looks pretty good. I'm on board the German ship. Are you alright? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm better than okay. I just got laid in space! He tells them that the German ship only needs minimal repairs in order to lift off, and if you're wondering why so many crew members seem to keep coming back from the dead, turns out the monster is able to infect people with parasites that can control their brains even after they've died. This is actually a pretty inventive twist that helps make the monster threatening even when you can't see it, which is a lot. And despite finding more dead bodies, Klaus Kinski still manages to be the most unsettling thing in this movie. My friends, this is not a place for you. You are not butterflies. Quit being creepier than the alien, you weirdo! 
You know, it's a shame Klaus Kinski and Tommy Wiseau never made a movie together. In fact, are we sure they aren't related? And it looks like these two aren't the only pale, ghostly actors in this movie anymore. Over on the German ship, looks like they managed to get the light bright working, although I don't know about the rest of the ship. Ugh, damn lights are out. I think you could use that sentence to describe this entire movie. I didn't even think the dark was this dark. And never mind the dead bodies, someone seriously needs to clean up all these damn spider webs. She realizes something's wrong with John after giving him a Michael Jackson ectomy. And we also see the alien again, I think. This thing is so camera shy, the clearest shot of it we've gotten so far has been the box cover. But at least it lets me do this gag. Decapitation! Ah! I'll give Bill Malone credit, he did the whole Hellraiser in space thing way before Event Horizon. No joke, in the early 90s, William Malone tried to make a movie called Dead Star, which was described as being like Hellraiser in space. And he even had some concept art made by H.R. Giger, who also did the concept art for Alien. Plus, this movie's effects were done by Robert and Dennis Skotak, who later went on to do the effects for Aliens. Which means I've now done two Alien knockoffs, which ended up having connections to the real series. This is like finding out the caterer for Mighty Peking Man went on to direct Kong Skull Island. Canal. Now now, fellas, I already did the decapitation gag. Shortly after this, Klaus appears to Beth as a zombie. Not sure how she can tell, though. He acts pretty much the same. You are so pretty. Come and join me with my friends. I see you like guns. What else do you like? It's good to know that even in the 80s, Klaus still wanted to bang Francine. And she goes outside without her helmet on, so I guess she's dead. Oh, never mind, she's fine. Spacesuit helmets are kind of like bike helmets. They're really more of a suggestion than a requirement. The others also discover that their spacesuits are missing, but screw looking for those, first somebody needs to find a light switch. It's so dark that when Klaus drags Beth inside, these two don't even notice he's a zombie until he starts attacking them. And even then, they probably just thought it was Klaus Kinski throwing one of his onset tantrums. <laughs> well, great, you just killed the best actor in this movie. Or at least the body double they used for that scene, anyway. Okay, you got rid of Klaus, but what are you going to do about the alien? I saw a movie once where a, a group of people were, were trapped in an ice station by a carrot from another planet. No, no, that's the 1951 version of the thing. You're supposed to be knocking off Alien with a little bit of the 1982 version of the thing. So no joke, they plan to kill the alien by luring it to a part of the ship they've rigged with electricity, just like in the 1951 version of The Thing. Well, beats blowing it out of the airlock, I guess. First, though, they need to find the damn thing. Considering how dim the lighting is and what little we've seen of it so far, it could be on screen right now for all I know. <laughs> See? Told ya. They better get away from that thing fast before it forces me to do a Predator reference. Actually, you know what? Never mind. You could probably speed walk away from this thing. One upside of trying to kill it with electricity, it lets us get a better idea of what it looks like. Sort of. Is it dead? Well, there's still 20 minutes left, so probably not. It's dead. <laughs> You're gonna make me do the Dave Chappelle psych gag, aren't you? Nailed it! The monster ends up grabbing Beth, but on the plus side, at least it's giving people a chance to get a better look at it. And if electrocuting it didn't work, how are they supposed to kill it now? Jesus, there's enough explosives here to blow us all to hell. Okay, I guess if trying to kill it like the 1951 version of the thing didn't work, might as well try killing it like in the 1982 version. But uh-oh. Davison, the hatched engineering is open. Have you got that thing in sight? I don't think it's been visible the entire movie. So, is it supposed to be behind him right now? I still can't really see. Oh, hey, there it is. Well, the commander may be dead, but at least he left us with a great shot for the movie's trailer. The monster ends up strapped to some explosives on a timer, but more importantly, I can finally tell what this thing looks like. And I don't think trying to kung fu fight it outside is a great idea. You know, now that I'm able to get a good look at this thing, it looks less like a xenomorph and more like if Godzilla fucked an anaconda. But oh shit, the explosives didn't go off. What are they gonna do? Oh, it did go off. 
Oh, yes, it did. Bryce, you're alive! And also still in this movie. Phew, thanks a lot, Bryce. Another couple hours out there and I would have been a goner. Also, where the hell were you? I got lost. Okay, good enough for me. And so, the three of them blast off to find the Engineer's homeworld, leading to the events of Titan Find Covenant. Nah, <laughs> just kidding, this movie didn't get a sequel. Creature is known as one of the more blatant alien knockoffs out there, but it is also one of the more well-produced, and there's even a couple of inventive ideas in it. The feel of the movie is actually closer to some of the 50s and 60s B-movies that helped inspire Alien, just amped up with some 80s-style nudity and gore. Oh, and you may remember at the beginning I said the movie's never gotten a widely available official DVD release. Well, there's a bit of a story behind that. Some of the details are a little sketchy, but in 2013, William Malone independently released a remastered widescreen DVD of the movie that was only available through a single website, with the intention of eventually releasing it on Blu-ray, too. However, supposedly MGM stepped in, claiming they owned the rights to the movie and had sales shut down, and now copies of the DVD fetch high prices on the internet. While Malone hoped he could work something out and get the movie released again, here we are in 2017 and it's still not available. And as a reminder, this cheap cash-in that looks like it was made in an afternoon got a Blu-ray. Oh, but this movie? Something with decent production values and some clever ideas? Nah, this doesn't need to be available for people to see. Look, to whoever owns the rights, or thinks they own the rights, please try and work something out with William Malone so the poor guy can release his movie. After all, if this can get an official DVD release, then I say so can this. Well, that's the end of Alien Month. After this, I'm back to business as usual, including some Patreon requests, as well as the return of an old friend. Until next time...